Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install electron carburetor on a two-stroke dirt bike. These electron carburetors are hot on the market right now, and the reason for that is they self-adjust for altitude, temperature, and humidity, which means no more having to mess with jets. So the bike we're putting this on today is a 2004 CR250R, and this procedure will be similar for other two-stroke dirt bikes. So they're really easy to install. If you can remove your carburetor, then you can install one of these. So we'll go ahead, show you how to get this installed, and we'll do it up. To do this job, we really just need some basic hand tools. We've got some sockets, screwdrivers, rag safety glasses, and since we're dealing with gas, we do have these rubber gloves. And since this procedure is similar to replacing your stock carburetor, we'll also be using the OEM service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. For parts, we have our Electron carburetor. It does come with a new throttle cable. Now, it is different than the one that's already on the bike. This inner cable is a little bit longer. And if you have high risers or taller bars, we do sell longer cables on our website. The kit, it also comes with a few adjusting tools for this carburetor. Now, the carburetor is self-adjusting, but you can fine tune it. So if you're a more advanced or serious racer, you can make some adjustments later on. To start this off, we need to remove our seat and gas tank. Before you remove the fuel tank, you'll wanna have your fuel valve in the off position and we'll remove this fuel hose. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now that we have our gas tank off, we can release this three pin connector on the right hand side of the bike. And this is going down to the throttle position sensor on our carburetor. The next thing we need to do is loosen the clamps for our air boot and intake manifold. With the clamps loose, we'll now remove the three screws on top of the carburetor and remove the slide. With the slide out, we'll pull this spring back and we can remove the cable out. Now you'll notice Whoever put this together last, put this plastic piece in upside down. And we'll just remove this stuff out of the way. We're not reusing it, but just in case you ever decide to go back, we'll just put it in a safe place. Now I'm gonna remove the top of this carb from that cable, and then we'll just set this cable out of the way. To remove the carburetor, what we'll do is press back on this air boot right here, and it's gonna pull away from the intake boot, and then we'll slide it out to the side. So we'll just take the whole assembly and we'll put it with that slide. So what we'll do now, we're gonna take our new throttle cable and we'll just run it down next to this cable where it's routed right now. So to get everything hooked up on ours, we're actually moving this master cylinder a little bit. It is kind of getting in the way. So we'll just slide that over a little. And then we need to remove this rubber that goes over our throttle housing. So now we'll remove these two screws and start disassembling the throttle housing so we can mount our new throttle cable. So when we put this new end into our throttle housing, what we wanna do, we wanna have one to three threads showing right here. And that'll allow for better adjustment later on. We'll insert the cable end then we'll thread the cable into the housing, making sure we leave it a couple turns out. Then before we install this cable end, we'll apply a little bit of this white grease that came with the kit onto that. And then we'll install that into the throttle tube. Then we'll put this pulley back into place, making sure that pin stayed in there. And then we'll reinstall this cover. After that, we can pull this rubber protector back over the throttle housing. We'll slide our master cylinder and brake lever back into place and tighten these bolts down. So now that we have both throttle cables in place, we'll go ahead and remove this old one out of the way. Now back on the other side of the bike, what we'll do is take these three screws out of the top of our electron carburetor. And then after that, we're gonna tip this thing upside down and remove the slide. 
and we'll set the carburetor aside for a second. Now we'll take the top of this carburetor and the end of the cable and we'll screw it into place and tighten it up. So I'm just gonna slide this boot right into place right now. It's gonna keep everything covered up. So now we'll take the cable and we'll put just a little bit of this white grease right on that end. Then we'll take this spring and gasket and we'll put these into place, feed the cable through them. So once the cable's through them, we're actually gonna pull the spring all the way back, get that out of the way, and then we're gonna take our slide and we'll install the cable through this circle at the bottom and then straight up through it and let the spring come all the way down. Now this is our metering rod. It can be turned. We'll get into that later on. So this flat part has to face the front of the bike and same with this protruding part on the slide, it's gonna to be towards the front of the bike. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our carburetor and slide this into place. The next thing we'll do is install these three screws back onto the top of the carburetor and tighten them down. One thing I wanna point out is there is more than one way to install these carburetors. Some bikes, you are gonna to have to lift this subframe up out of the way to get access to all this stuff. But since we don't need to do that, what we're gonna do is set the throttle free play right now. So how we're gonna do that is with the middle throttle cable adjuster. So what we'll do, we'll back it out until we see the slide start to rise up a little bit, and then we'll back it out three turns after we see the slide seat back into the carburetor body. After you've got it set up, you'll lock the tensioner into place. Now I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna wipe these intake boots out just to make sure we don't get any dirt anywhere. And then we're gonna take our carburetor and install it the same way we took the other carburetor out. But with this, we have these vent lines coming down. Now, Lectron recommends having at least one of these facing down. If you do wanna route two of these up back into the airbox, something like that, that's fine. But for this, we're actually just gonna route them all down to the ground. So what I'm gonna do to install this is put the back of the carburetor into the air boot and I'll push it back and let the front of the carburetor drop into place. With the carburetor back into place, we'll put the hose clamps back on and we'll put them in a position that's gonna be easy to tie them down. For you guys at home, you can go ahead and put the gas tank back on the seat, side covers, everything else. But since we're already in here, I do wanna show you some of the adjustments that can be made if you really feel like you need to. Lectron says these metering rods should be adjusted within a quarter of a turn from the factory, so you're probably not gonna to have to mess with this. But if you do find yourself needing to adjust it, if you turn this in clockwise, it's gonna be richer and counterclockwise is gonna be leaner. And what you do, you take this tool that came in the kit, slide that into place, and you'll turn it in quarter turn increments. So we just went a quarter turn richer. And then this flat part of this metering rod, it needs to be facing the front of the bike. So what we're gonna have to do, we press up on it so we don't change our adjustment. And then this falls right back into place where we need it. Like I said before, these things are self-adjusting and should be good to go out of the box. But if you do feel like you need to make adjustments, it is possible. And keep in mind, anytime you're adjusting this metering rod, you're probably gonna have to adjust your idle as well. Another thing that is possible to adjust on this carburetor is this power jet. And what adjusts it is this screw right on top. So this thing stock, it's gonna be anywhere from three quarter to one and a quarter turns out. And you never wanna run the bike with this thing fully closed. And most of the time it's gonna be less than one and a half turns out. Another thing that Lectron recommends, if you'll be running in sand dunes or if you have a snow bike where you're gonna be wide open throttle all the time, they recommend turning this screw one eighth to a quarter turn counterclockwise that richens it up a little bit and helps the bike run a little cooler. Keep in mind that you're never gonna be more than two turns out on this adjustment. Now I'm gonna reinstall this slide and then put everything back together. So in our carburetor, we obviously have way too much fuel line. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up. 
I'm going to put the clamps back onto the fuel line and we'll get everything installed and I'll tighten these clamps down. So we'll go ahead and turn our fuel valve on, start the bike up and make sure everything runs well. And anytime you're doing this, make sure you're in a well ventilated area. And that's all there is to installing your Lectron carburetor on your two stroke dirt bike. It's really that easy. It makes a huge difference when you're going on rides where you have a lot of elevation changes or if you just don't ever want to mess with jetting, you can go ride different spots without having to adjust anything. So it's really cool for that reason. And if you need these parts, they're available on our website. Check it out and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a ton of other helpful videos on there. Thanks for watching.